Choose Jesus. The sermon today will focus on two choices. Choose or don't choose Jesus. God gave us free will to make choices with or without his help. Jesus, in his teachings, explained this to us in a variety of ways. The choice to choose Jesus is easy, yet for some can be complicated. As we continue on, allow me to discuss the choices along with the consequences. Deciding against Jesus, this ultimately will be the worst and most dangerous decision one will make. Why? Well, for a few reasons. Once you make this your final choice, that's it, said and done, whether you do it in life or at the time of your death. Living without Jesus is empty. The illusion is that you're content, but when you're alone, you feel empty, just wondering what you're missing. You don't live life, you just go through the motions. Problems just pile up, one after the other. Stress plays a big part. All the wrong people happen to show up in your life. Everyone is pulling a scam. Then there is the other illusion. You could have the perfect life. All is going your way. Problems are easily solved. Not a care in the world. You receive every desire you have. You're peaceful and content. Now you're going to wonder why I'm saying this. The answer is quite simple. There is no need to seek Jesus, to ask him what he thinks of your choices. He's out of your life. This is exactly what the enemy, Satan, wants. For you to be totally separated from Jesus, away from his love, mercy, forgiveness, joy, peace, compassion, healing, but more importantly, his life, his very essence. By this time, it will be too late. No turning back and changing the answer. End result. Total darkness will be your home for eternity, enduring a never-ending torment in a place where there is no love. Now, we're going to discuss deciding for Jesus. This will be the most important decision you will be forever grateful for making. Your reward will be of one that is beyond human explanation. Jesus is our Savior. He died for us at the request of his Father who is in heaven. Greater love hath no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends. John tells us that in 1513, as this is from the King James Version. Out of such love for us, Jesus did this so that we will live again, coming back into relationship with God. All he asks us to do is to believe in him, to accept him in our hearts as our Lord and Savior. He wants a relationship with us. With Jesus in our life, we have a guide and a protector, an advisor who wishes to be part of every decision we make. There is light, healing, joy, peace, contentment. There is wisdom beyond measure. Then there is the promise that one day we will live with him in paradise, where there is no darkness, no pain, no tears, and no torment. Don't get me wrong. Jesus did not say if we choose him, there would be no problems in this life. He did say he would be by our side through every storm and every victory. He did promise he would answer every prayer, that when we sought him with a true heart, we would find him. He would give us living water, and we would never thirst again our enemies would be at peace with us. He would always intervene on our behalf to the Father. Moving on to a few more reasons is the fact that if we ask, He will forgive us our sins. If we drift away from Him, He allows us to return and takes us back in His loving arms 
because of his mercy and compassion. Now you have it. Your choices along with the consequences of each. This is just the beginning. There is much more we'll discuss in another sermon later on. When you leave here today, live your life to the fullest as you contemplate your decision if you have not already made it. Go out and do the right thing. Spend time, quality time, alone with him. Talk to him. Listen. Really listen to what he has to say to you. Ask for forgiveness. Accept him. I pray you do. Look at others who he lives in. See how their lives have changed when they accepted him. Talk to them about their transformation. This will help you in your choice. But I really want you to remember one thing, the most important thing. He loves you. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. I'm Reverend Tony and thank you for joining me tonight. And please continue to walk in the presence of God. You'll be glad you did. Have a blessed evening.